president and a man named Hank Gillis who come down with a bad case of the mumps over here. Is that the special? Yeah, that's her. Ought to be here in a couple of minutes now. Pardon me. Sheriff, I'm looking for my dad. Have you seen him? No, I haven't, Tommy. But he shouldn't be hard to find. Your dad's not in jail for a change. Try one of the saloons. Any saloon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Name's Tommy Keever. Sure feels sorry for that boy. That's his trouble. His dad. Keever's the town drunk. Tashman says we gotta move. She threw all our clothes out of the room. She says we gotta be out by 12 o'clock. Oh, she did, did she? You tell that old battle axe that we paid our rent, we're not moving anywhere. Until next Monday. Well, Dad... Now get out of here! Sloan's no place for a kid. It's no place for you either, Dad. Let's move our stuff. Not today. I got other business. Please, Dad. I'll ask you just once more. Stay away from that hotel. Get out of here! Cut that out. We'll have none of that rough stuff in here. You kid, get out of here. You don't belong. Citizens of Midvale, Mayor Smith, fellow Americans, the man I am about to introduce Fellow Americans, with a feeling of high honor and humble respect, I present to you President Theodore Roosevelt. you do it, boy? Why in the world would you want to shoot Colonel Dodge? I didn't try to shoot Colonel Dodge. You mean you tried to shoot the president? No, I didn't try to shoot him either. I shot clear over the roof of the hotel. Where'd you get this gun, you little rat? That's my business. No, it's my business. Where'd you get this gun? I don't think it's any of our business. The boy tried to shoot the president. It's a matter for the Secret Service. I didn't try to shoot him. Then who did you try to shoot? Nobody. I just... Well, I... I... I better patch him up here. He's bleeding pretty bad. I'll see you hang for this. Take it easy, Sheriff. He's not a man. He's just a boy. We're just trying to find out why you shot at that balcony. I didn't. Honest, I didn't. Just answer the question, Tommy. Colonel, this boy is obviously a case of adolescent schizophrenia, uh, sometimes referred to in Latin as dementia precox. And now translated into plain English, the terms of the layman. Uh, Thank you, Major. Uh, would you gentlemen mind leaving us alone for a moment, please? Oh, no. yes, sir. Uh, not you, Dr. Baxter. What's the matter with this boy? Can you help him? I don't know, Colonel. I'll do the best I can. That's all I can promise. That's all anyone can promise. I don't know why you did it, but I guess you had your reasons. I won't press any charges, Tommy. You mean, sir... You mean you're gonna let me go? No one was hurt but you yourself. And I hope you get well again soon. Real soon. So long, Tommy. So long, Colonel. And thanks. The other part is his natural love for his father. Tommy's all mixed up. 
You have no right to open that. It's none of your business. Oh, Tommy, I was just trying to help you. We're on your side, Tommy. And when you're old enough, we'd like to see you go to West Point. You do want to go, don't you? Sure. But how can I? My own dad was a coward at San Juan Hill. What use would they have for me? It's the wrong attitude, Tommy. You can go to West Point if you really set your heart to it. It takes more than setting your heart. Tommy? Why don't you and I have a little talk, man to man? If you'll tell me the truth, maybe we can make a deal. You keep on going to school and try as hard as you can and make good marks, and I'll do everything I can to get you into West Point. But who... who will get me the appointment? President Theodore Roosevelt and Colonel Dodge. But first you have to tell me the truth about what happened down at the hotel. You took that gun from Mrs. Cashman's rooming house, didn't you? Yes, sir. You didn't intend to shoot anybody. You figured that when you fired that shot into the air, it would attract everyone's attention and stop your dad from shooting, didn't you? Well, sir, I... I, I... Tommy, you're not protecting him by lying. Your father in a drunken stupor was out to get revenge against the president and Colonel Dodge. He's a sick man, and he blames them instead of himself for the mess he's got his life into. Tommy, you can't go on forever living in the shadow of another man's mistake. You won't have to, Tommy. You and me, we're getting out of here. We got things to do. We'll start a new life. Keever, put that gun down. You keep out of this, Doc. Come on, Tommy. I got the wagon right outside. Nobody's gonna take you away from me, son. I'll kill anybody who tries. Keever, you've lived half of your life hiding behind a bottle. I don't blame you for that. But there's one thing I do blame you for. And that's trying to hide behind your own son. Why don't you do something right for once? Why don't you go away and let that boy alone? Mighty pretty nurse you got here, Doc. Sure hate to mess her up with a Colt 44. But tell her to mind her own business! No, Doc. No. Come on, Tommy! I'd better go with him, Doc, before he hurts somebody. He don't know what he's doing. I don't know what I'm doing! Son, come on! Please keep my suitcase for me, will you? I'll send for it later. Oh, yes, yes, Tommy. that he wasn't scared anymore. You can always remember one thing, Tommy. He died like a man. 
Cotton to folks named Grant. You don't know how much you love me once we get started. Tell him, Wilcox. Tell him exactly what. Dan Trent! Yes. Hi, man. Service is over already, sir. I keep forgetting to set the alarm. How's the neck, Wilcox? Coming along fine, sir. Thursday they take off the saddle. Where are they shipping you? No place. I put in for the new class. You cracked up on the tower. You know what'll happen to you if you go up in a plane? Anybody else want to catch? Oh, sorry, Stepler. It's okay. Don't you ever get tired? You wouldn't dare. Daddy wouldn't like it. He in the new class, too? That's Babe Jeffcoat from Ohio State. His papa was all American. He's got umpteen million bucks now. Babe's still a nice guy. But he's in the wrong outfit. Hiya, folks. Fill it up, please. Yes, ma'am. Each of a day, isn't it? What? I say it's a nice day. Knock it off. Check that oil and water? Uh, no, no, never mind. Okay. Tell him we're in a hurry. Say, don't bother with that. We're in sort of a hurry. Oh, sure thing. It'll be 520, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you. Just a minute, ma'am. Something wrong? I just saw you got your skirt caught in the door here. Yes, thanks. Thanks very much. Okay. Give me highway patrol. Hurry! Flight 576, isn't it? That's flight 576. He's 90 degrees off course. I better call the patrol plane and check. This thing's traveling at 4,000 miles an hour. 4,000? Call Spyglass 7 to have him get on his television camera. Keyhole advance to Spyglass 7. Transmit UFO on your television camera. He has it on interception course. Get that picture. Now. Come in, Spyglass 7. Come in. Come in. Wire that picture to Conrad and hurry. Yes, sir. What do you 
say that. You gave us two days to leave the country or we've got a war on our hands. You mean he wants us to back up and go? And stay up. That's what he wants. Can't you talk with him? Couldn't you bargain with him some way? Well, I tried. I even told him I'd punish Manville and his two friends if the rest of us could stay. You did what, Boone? You heard me. What right do you have to bargain with human lives? Open the gate. Yes, sir. said you'd like to have this. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, you watch it for me, and if I don't come back, it's yours. Whatever you're fixing to do, Dad. I'm going to take a real long gamble, Cincinnatus. So long, Dad. 